like many developing countries, there is a strong belief in Sierra Leone that the solution to our dire poverty comes from abroad. And so from healthcare to education, down to governing ourselves, we depend on external aid for everything and are failing to build capable institutions to manage our economy and our welfare. In this documentary, we ask, what are our state-owned enterprises and power statehouse doing with the trillions of loans they receive for the welfare of Sierra Leoneans? We ask this question because, before we head off to the IMF and the World Bank for funds to buy books and drugs for us, it is useful to know why our state enterprises and parastatals fail to create wealth, jobs and services, and how to stop that failure. We know that government is currently reviewing the state-owned enterprises law, and so we dip in that debate. But first, let us look at state-owned enterprises and parastatals at a glance. The Road Transport Corporation, which has received over 350 bosses from both SLPP and APC over the last 20 years, has never replenished its fleets using its own resources, even though we pay millions of loans in transport fares every day. In fact, 80 mystery bosses procured in 2014 disappeared in three years. At the budget hearing a few years ago, this Australian state lottery, Lotto, declared that the company's account was in red for eight years running, but its managers were still paid hefty salaries. Similarly, this institution, Seratel, once the only gateway we communicate with the outside world and supposedly the highest source of revenue for government years back is dead. Seratel cannot compete with private telephone operators. Successive governments have consigned Seratel into a $20 million debt with hundreds of its idle staff now going on regular strike for backlog pay. This man never told me salary five months this national insurance company, mother of all insurance companies 20 years ago, has become the mother of all failures. By 2018, NIC has almost been dwarfed into non-existence by private insurance company Ritzcorp. By 2021, NIC's liabilities had reached 7 billion euros. Even these state-owned banks, Australian Commercial Bank, Rukel Commercial Bank, went broke in 2015 and we are only bailed out by the state-owned social security scheme, NASIT. Like state-owned enterprises, parastatals are also a source of waste and debt. But what is more troubling is the impunity that go with the waste. By 2018, the previous government had spent over $500 million on electricity and still left Sierra Leone in darkness. For the past five years, President B has spent additional millions of United States dollars for the provision of electricity to the car power ship. This brings the total amount spent for the provision of electricity for the past 15 years to 985 million United States dollars. This amount is enough for the country to have its own car power ship through special financing arrangements. But EDSA under APC and SAPP, up to now, we have still not yet a short of lights. Same here in NASIT. Since its establishment, in 2004, NASIT has collected tens of trillions of leons. Many of its prime investments from Kimbima Hotel, West Africa Holdings, Sierra Blocks are either struggling or have collapsed. Because state-owned enterprises and parastatals operate in a zero fiscal discipline environment, they've made widespread poverty part of our collective memory and our reality. So it's time to ask, why are these enterprises failing? Experts offer three explanations for this. There is no real commitment of privatizing these entities or ensuring efficiency of these power status. Since 2004, the so-called privatization has merely been a scheme benefiting a few individuals in many ways. It gives fat salaries to people politically connected. Salaries of the top executives of the National Privatization Commission, state enterprises and power statals can sometimes be 10 times higher than the senior civil servants supervising them. They are on hand games at any time they are selling or leasing a set of state-owned enterprises. Privatizing the Sierra Leone Produce Marketing Board, SLPMB, in 2010 was a mere ploy to sell the most valuable asset belonging to the company. 
once the assets were sold or leased to some business people, government went on to form a new company for exporting cocoa and coffee, using the remaining less valuable properties, mainly the stores in the interior of the country. The racket was so bad that SLPNB's warehouse at Deepwater Key in Freetown was leased to a private cocoa and coffee exporter, while the state company went on to rent a small store in the same vicinity of the port. The racket left SLPNB as one of the least cocoa and coffee exporters in Sierra Leone. These state-owned enterprises are a reliable source of secretly financing politics. When these two banks collapsed in 2014, 70% of their bad debtors were either politicians, government officials, or businesses affiliated with politicians. State enterprises and parastatals fail because they operate in high corruption risk environments. The justification for privatizing the functions of the state and the creation of parastatals is that SOEs are seen as more capable institutions than a weak and corrupt state. But what we fail to realize is that when states are weak and corrupt, that character can bleed into the very language and business of every facet of society, including the private sector and NGOs. The fact that by 2013, Transparency International had ranked Sierra Leone as the highest in the world for bribery, and in that same year, Afrobarometer survey had put business executives second only to the police for corruption, explains why the failure of almost all state-owned enterprises and parastatals did not occur by accident. And the Sierra Leone Chamber of Commerce is largely silent even when corruption raises the risk and the cost of business operations. Bribery by business executives for contracts is not uncommon. So the lack of a result-based and merit-based management system is the biggest obstacle to the performance and success of state-owned enterprises and parastatas. Parastatas and state-owned enterprises are very lucrative and that makes them an important political target for politicians and their allies. When political compensation takes preeminence in appointment, institutions head for complete failure. Under both SLPP and the APC, the National Privatization Commission is always headed by persons with high standing within the ruling party and not necessarily people with track record to deliver results in the private sector. I was one of the signatories for the, the contract, the contract and I took my advice. Unfortunately, there are no publicly defined results for these state-owned enterprises and parastatas. For example, how are the CEOs recruited? How are they promoted? Who assesses them? What is um, their performance benchmark? All of these are not clarified, and this, I think, is one of the biggest challenges that confront them. And because attaining these positions is part of a wider system of compensating political support, there has been little incentive to undertake difficult reforms to block the waste. We cannot continue like this. We cannot continue to protect failure in discipline and debt in our institutions and expect other countries to feed us and heal our sick. 20 years after the rebel war has ended, the failure of state enterprises and parastatals have trapped us in huge domestic debt. So here are three things we can do. Number one, let us use the upcoming state enterprise bill to stop all forms of state enterprise and parastatal induced debts. Number two, government should establish clear measures and timelines to put state enterprises and parastatals on the road to profit making. Number three, when we say we want to promote private sector led growth, we should mean it. The road to building a more competitive economy for Sierra Leone should go via a vibrant private sector and a more accountable public sector. And given the nature of our politics, we need an independent agency for the promotion, protection, and development of open and more transparent competition. And although SLPP, as the party in power, should take leadership in making state enterprises and parastatals efficient, the APC too, be they in opposition or a ruling party, 
have the shared obligation to adopt the institutional practices that will check the rot and the debt in state enterprises.